Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We are back again with King Arthur Knight's Tale. Let's do another video breaking down the best characters in each class, this time focusing on sages. I will leave links in the description for my individual breakdown of two characters listed here. All of this is subjective, so please leave your feedback below regarding what you agree or disagree with and who is on your personal list. Like before, I will list my top two favorites and provide one honorable mention who gives a different flavor that may not be my personal cup of tea. My honorable mention sage is Lady of Sold. She has a fantastic kit with most of the sage powers you would be interested in, starting with Inspire, which will give all of your party members two extra AP to work with. You can also upgrade this ability to lower the cooldowns of your entire team by one. This is a monster ability that can dramatically change the course of a battle, especially if you have two people on the team capable of using it. She also has Ice Lance, which will do 150% damage to an enemy within seven squares and freeze them after being upgraded. Looking at her kit, you'll quickly see Ice is her specialty as she also has Freezing Attack, Ice Wall, and Master of Ice. She is also the only hero that has Ice Aura, which will deal 50% damage and chill any unit that is adjacent to her. Chilled enemies have 33% less AP, making it much more difficult for melee enemies to attack her. Isolde also has Wish of Death, which will give her 1 AP every time an enemy unit dies. This is extremely powerful, since the party will repeatedly face groups 3 or 4 times their size. Starting the battle with Inspire, and letting the party use extra AP to wipe out trash mobs, which in turn loads her up with AP, is a very effective strategy. Outside of those abilities, she also has Bless, Frost Armor, and Soothing Words, all of which are fantastic. Finally, she has the Thankful Trait, which provides plus one loyalty for every relic she possesses, helping you to max out her loyalty bar. Lady of Soul does have some weaknesses to consider. You must unlock Tristan, complete all of his events, and then revive her from the crypt to bring her into your party. I don't remember the exact time I triggered this, but it was definitely past level 10, so I consider her a mid-late game hero. Also, she has the Impious trait, which lowers her loyalty by one every time a Christian decision is made, limiting your ability to keep her loyalty bar maxed. Finally, I consider her to be vulnerable in melee combat. Without abilities like Ice Shield or Teleport, if Lady of Soul gets around it, she's kind of stuck. Many enemies can still attack even when chilled, so I don't think Ice Aura is enough to compensate for the absence of the other abilities. You must use extra care when placing her on the battlefield. With the honorable mention out of the way, let's get into my personal second best sage, Guinevere. She is an awesome character who I like using to assault the back line of enemy groups. Teleport allows her to do this with ease and it is another monster ability. After upgrades, it will take you anywhere within nine squares and only costs one AP and you can become hidden after teleporting. There's a two turn cooldown that of course is decreased by Inspire. I ran with Guinevere and Lancelot on the same team, was just about always ensured that Guinevere could teleport whenever she wanted every turn. Guinevere is the only character with Ray of Light, which for two AP hits enemies within 11 tiles for 25% weapon damage and blinds them, which imposes a 50% penalty on attacking a target. How useful this is to you probably depends on what difficulty you are playing on. For normal, and maybe even hard, I am not sure it is worth it, but on very hard, you can definitely get some use out of this. She also has all the standard sage abilities you want, like Bless, Ice Wall, Soothing Words, Wish of Death, Freezing Attack, and Frost Armor. Like all characters, she does have some weaknesses. She is Old Faith Rightful, and if your morality differs from either of those, it may be difficult to max her loyalty. She also has the Disloyal Trait, which imposes a negative three penalty on her loyalty bar. Also, like Lady of Sold, Guinevere is squishy in melee combat and can be overrun if you place her improperly. Having teleport gives you more leeway, but you still must be careful.
Quick note before we talk about my favorite sage. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate you hitting the like button. This information tells me which content the channel is enjoying and helps my video spread to more people. I really appreciate all of the support. For my number one sage, I am going with Lady Morgals, one of, if not the best, crowd controlling heroes in the game. The key to appreciate her kit is to understand you are not wiping out large groups of enemies with her. Instead, you are setting up enemies to be wiped out by your allies. Morgals has Thunderbolt, Chain Lightning, Master of Lightning, and she is the only hero with Thunderstorm. Thunderstorm is yet another monster ability that deals 50% damage and shock to any enemy that is within two tiles of where the storm originates. Shocked enemies have up to 50% less AP, making them much easier to deal with. Please note in Thunderstorm's description, I said enemies, which means you can place Thunderstorm right under Sir Mordred and let it tear into all the foes that surround him. She also has Freezing Attack, Ice Spikes, and Ice Wall, giving her a lot of versatility in how she deals with enemies. Her Strike can be upgraded to inflict Chill as well. This means depending on her build, she is able to freeze, shock, stun, and chill enemies. That is an incredible amount of crowd control diversity at your fingertips. On top of all this, she has Ice Plates, which is one of the strongest defensive powers in the game. After upgrades for one AP, it will completely negate four attacks for four turns. It has a four turn cooldown, so technically you can keep this power up permanently. This allows you to safely bring Morgals into melee range to use abilities like Freezing Attack without concern. On top of all that, she has a strong minded trait, which boosts her mental debuff resistance by 20, and the thankful trait, which provides a plus one boost to loyalty for every relic she has. Of course, there are some drawbacks to consider, and three of them are major. The biggest one that will certainly make her a no-go for many players is that she is mutually exclusive with Merlin. If you recruit Morgas, he will never join your team, and the game makes that very clear. Another massive drawback some of you may have noticed is that she does not have Inspire, and I've already covered how amazing that ability is. The final big drawback is the Sober trait, which removes her ability to use potions. There are items which can remove negative traits, but they are extremely rare, and you get her late in the game, so you might not possess one that lets you remove this. Outside of those weaknesses, she is also an Old Faith Tyrant. You must have a high Old Faith ranking to recruit her, so the first part shouldn't be a problem. But if you are not a Tyrant, keeping her loyalty maxed could prove difficult. Finally, I think it is worth noting she does not have access to teleport, so she lacks the maneuverability Guinevere possesses. As long as you're okay with those weaknesses, I think Lady Morgals is an incredible addition to your team who will set up all her allies for success. That is my personal list of the best sages in the game. Looking forward to hearing feedback on your personal favorites. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a like, share this content, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.